Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed important concepts of script customization that is parameterization and correlation. If you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly recommend watching them first and continuing this video. In today's video, we will talk about the modularization concept. This is one of the important concepts and every performance tester need to know about it. So without any further delay, let's get started. So what is modularization? Modularization means breaking down large and complex functions of the application into smaller self-contained parts. These parts are also referred to as modules. Each module has a specific role or function and they work together to make the whole system work. Basically, it is a way of keeping things organized, making it simpler to understand, maintain and improve different parts of larger system independently. To understand these concepts clearly, let's take a real-time scenario. Let's assume that within the performance testing team, we have one manager, one lead and four performance test engineers who are responsible for conducting performance testing for all their client applications. And they have engaged to certify the performance of their client's personal banking application. During requirements gathering, the team understands the critical functionalities of the application along with their throughput requirements. So those functionalities are login with 100 TPS, transfer the funds between accounts with 10 TPS and paying bill with 20 TPS and finally interact transfer with 15 TPS. Here TPS means transactions per second. The client would like to understand their application performance with these volumes. Some clients may outline the user requirements as well and sometimes they will give us the total peak users information. Then the performance testing team will distribute the user count to the functionalities accordingly. Okay. After gathering the critical functionalities, the performance testing team will work with business analysts or the functional testing team to understand the detailed functional steps for those identified functionalities. Let's try to understand those detailed navigational steps now. For login functionality, we have three steps. First, user will try to launch the application and then the user will try to log in using a valid username and password. Finally, the user will log out from the application. Next, we have transfer functionality. Here, transfer means transferring the money between two accounts. The detailed steps for this functionality are launching the application and then logging into the application using valid user credentials, then selecting the account page, after that opening the transfer page and then fill all the necessary details and clicking the finish button. Finally, the user will log out from the application. Next one, pay bill. Here, pay bill means paying bills to the registered payees. In this functionality as well, first the user will launch the application and then log into the application using the valid credentials. After login, the user will select the account and then open the pay bill page. Here, the user will fill in all the required information and click the finish button. Finally, the user will log out from the application. The final functionality in our list is interact transfer. This is also called as email transfer. This functionality will be used when the user wants to send money to the registered email email address. So the first three steps are the same as the transfer pay bill functionalities like launch, login and selecting the account. After that, the user will open the interact transfer page. Then the user will fill all the necessary information and then click the finish button. Finally, the user will log out from the application. Okay. Once understanding the detailed navigation steps, the performance test lead will assign these four flows to four performance testers and they will start developing the test script using the tools like Jmeter. Okay. If you notice the steps in the flows, then are some repetitive steps which are colored in green. Even though some steps are repetitive in each flow, most of the time performance tester will create a separate script for all the steps including the repetitive ones. You might be thinking, fill details and click finish seems to be same across all the flows. Why we did not color as a repetitive step, right? This is because even though the step name seems to be the same, the actual functionality is different. Okay. So with all the repetitive steps, creating a separate script is not a correct approach because if the client make code changes to any one particular transaction, for example, login step, then the performance tester need to work on all four scripts again because the login code is duplicated in all four scripts, right? Instead of creating the scripts in this way, they can identify the common steps in all the flows and create an independent module so that those common steps can be reused in all scripts. Let's say this time performance tester created a separate module for login, which consists of two steps like launch the application and then log into the application. Also a separate module for logout and account. Okay. Now they can replace the repetitive step with the respective modules. So in the login script, they can use both login module and logout module. And in the transfer script, they can use login module, account module and logout module along with the unique steps for that flow. Similarly, the performance tester can replace repetitive step with the modules in both the pay bills and interaction 
product transfer margin okay so with the new approach let's say the client again makes some code changes related to the login step here we just need to make code change in the script in the login module alone and we don't need to make any changes in all four scripts because they are just referring the modules all the changes to the module will automatically apply to the scripts okay so this practice organize the code properly and promotes the code reusability principle in jmeter we can achieve modularity using the combination of test fragment and module controller or test fragment and include controller elements let's open the jmeter to understand this concept practically okay so before going into modularization elements discussion in jmeter let's quickly go through the script which was developed without modularization process okay so as we discussed earlier we have four functionalities identified for performance testing of personal banking application so in one test plan we have four thread groups and each thread group belongs to one functionality like we have login functionality transfer payable and interact transfer because all these four functionalities have different throughput requirement that's why i have created it as a separate thread group okay so inside the thread group i have sampler request for each step so in login we have three steps launch login and logout for each step or request i have chosen dummy sampler this is to avoid the dependency on the application and moreover you will be able to understand this concept more clearly okay so we have three dummy sampler request for login functionality similarly for transfer we have launch step login select account open transfer page fill details and finish and logout and each dummy sampler request in the request data i have script name which is basically a thread group name just to differentiate the request because we have launch in all four scripts login in all four scripts it will be difficult to understand which script that login transaction or step belongs to that is why i have used this thread group name function and also one fabricated request and then response okay in paybill also we have launch step login select account open paybill page fill details and finish and logout and finally interact e transfer also have some steps so these are all the steps that we have discussed earlier okay and then we have one view results tree to review the results of this request okay let's go to test plan and select the run thread group consequently so that first login transactions will be executed and then transfer after that pay bill and finally interact e transfer so this will help us to understand the request clearly otherwise by default jmeter will execute all these thread groups parallelly so it will be little difficult to go through those requests and responses okay so let's run this test now we can see first the steps under the login thread group got executed like we have launch from login script see login also from login script and logout from login script and then after that we have launch from transfer script login from transfer select account from transfer and open transfer fill details after that again launch from pay bill login from pay bill and then finally launch from interact transfer login from interact transfer so there is no issue so far because we have separate scripts and everything is working as we expected okay now let's say if client makes some code changes to the login transaction let's assume that they are expecting that we should be sending a request number along with that request so this is a new change in real time the change might not be this simple just to understand this concept i am making it more simpler okay so in that case what we need to do we need to add that request number in all the login steps right so request number 2340 so you have to repeat the same thing in all four scripts so here our requests are very simple it's very easy to copy paste this request number into all those four steps right but in real time it will be a little challenging to do this activity so this is one of the main reason that we always should follow the modularization process okay so if i run this script again we will only see the login changes in this login requested because we only made the changes in the login script if we go back to the login of the transfer script we don't have that request number and again if you go back to login script of payable we don't have because we haven't made any changes here so whoever is working on these scripts they have to come back and make all those changes in each script so that our scripts will work as expected okay so this is one of the main challenge if you are developing the scripts without modularization now let's go through the elements that we have in jmeter which supports the modularization okay so let me open another instance of jmeter so that i can copy paste some of the request from this script to the new script so let me save this script let me name it with modularization first we will see the module controller and then we will see the include so whenever we are doing this modularization first we need to understand what are all the repetitive steps 
So if you notice the without modulation demo script, we can see launch, login, logout is repeated in all the scripts, right? And again, we have select account also repetitive steps in transfer, pay bill and interact. So let's create a module for launch, login, logout and select accounts. So in JMeter to create that module, we can use test fragment element. So right click the test plan and go to test fragment and add the test fragment element. By default, it will be disabled so you can enable it and then you can add all the steps that you want to use it in your scripts. Okay, so these are the repetitive steps. So let's copy launch and login and then paste it here so that I don't need to create it again. Let me also delete this request number. Okay, and name it as login module. Okay, let's do the same thing for logout as well as the select account. So logout module and then this is for select account. Okay, and then remove these elements and copy the logout one. Copy and then paste. So we have logout and then select account. Copy and then paste. Now we have all the steps created as a separate modules. Okay, so we have login module, logout module and select account module. Now we need to create separate thread groups for all those four functionalities. Okay, so let's click on the test plan and then add thread users thread group. Let's name it as login and copy this four times. So you can rename it to transfer and then pay bill finally interact transfer. Okay, now we need to add the elements to these thread groups. So to refer this login module, we need to add module controller. So this is the first element that we are going to see in the after this script, we will also see the include controller. So to add the module controller, right click on the thread group, add and then logic controller, module controller. So here it will show you all the different modules available in this script. Okay, so let's name it as login module so that we can use this module controller to select the login module. Okay, and then in the module to run section, select the login module. So here you need to select which module you want this module controller to use. So we want login to be executed as part of this module controller. Okay, let's duplicate this because in login we have three steps, right? Launch, login and then logout. So we will use the second module controller for logout. So let's rename to logout and then select logout. So we have login module and then logout module inside the login script. Okay, so let's copy these two elements again because these two elements are there in all the remaining scripts as well. So we will paste it there. So pay bill and then interact transfer. If you see here, we have login module, logout module in all these three scripts. We also have one more module, which is select account. So in transfer, let's copy this module controller and then paste it again, rename it to select account module and then select the appropriate module. Okay. You need to make sure that you are selecting the right module. Otherwise you may not be seeing the expected results. Okay. So now we have select account module also created. Let's copy this module into other two scripts as well. Copy and then paste it. Now we have created all the modules in all these scripts. Now we need to create those unique steps. Let's go to transfer page, copy, open transfer page and fill details and finish steps and then paste it in this thread group. Okay. Just to save some time, I'm copying these elements from the other script and pasting it here. Okay. Similarly, copy these two elements from pay bill and then paste it in the pay bill thread group. Just move the logout down so that we can see the transactions or steps in, in a sequence order. Okay. And finally, let's copy the, these two steps from interact transfer to this particular thread group. Okay. Now the script is ready. We have created again four thread groups with all these steps that are required for this functionality. Okay. So before we executing the script, let's disable the test fragments because we don't need these test fragments. JMeter is recommending to disable them before we actually execute these scripts. Okay. So let's select all of them and then disable and also add one view results tree to go through these results. Okay. Now let's run the script. So before running the script, let's again select the run thread groups consequently and then run the script. So we can see all the transaction in the sequence order. Okay. So now first we have launch request from login script, login transaction or login step from the login script, logout from login. Again, if you see the launch, this is from the transfer script. Again, the login is from transfer, select account from transfer. Again, if you go to launch, this is the payable script. 
login is from payable select account from payable and finally we have launched from interaki transfer login interaki transfer and select account interaki transfer and then logout from interaki transfer now let's say client makes some code changes to the login step so they are expecting us to send request number part of the login request okay so now what we need to do is we just need to make the changes in this login step under the test fragment so you don't need to do anything else so let's come here and then make the change as request number 2340 okay once you are done let's save it and then clear the results read on the script so if you go to login step this is from login transaction right we haven't made any changes inside the login script we just made the change in the test fragment section so we have request number so if i go to transfer script i can see the request number if i go to pay bill script i can see the request number and then if i go to interaki transfer i can see the request numbers so this is the beauty of the modularization see you made only changes in one place and those changes reflected everywhere so this is one way of handling modularization using test fragment and module controller combination now we will look at the other way of doing the modularization in jmeter which is using the include controller okay so let's quickly save these elements as a separate test fragment so you can select those two elements and then select save as test fragment give the name as test fragment login module save it and then also select the logout and then say save as test fragment give the name as logout module and then select account. do the same thing save it now let's save this script as include controller demo okay now let's remove all these test fragments because we don't really required here so remove and also remove all the module controller because it is looking for those test fragment and we already removed it so let's remove them as well similarly pay bill remove remove and then interact with transfer also let's remove everything okay now what you need to do is you need to add include controller so right click the thread group and then add logic controller and then include controller so so this is the controller that we need to add in this script okay let's rename it to login because we are going to use this controller for login module and then in the include test plan section you need to select the file name so where exactly you have that code for the login module so click browse if you remember we have saved test fragment login module right you need to select that okay so then what jmeter will do is whenever it is executing the script it will use the code that is defined inside the test fragment login module okay any of your team members also can work on this script independently and you can make use of that script into your script as well and similarly we also need logout so let's add another include controller go to logic controller and select include controller and then say logout module and select the file name test fragment logout module okay so now the login script is ready so we have a login module and logout module so inside the transfer we also need the login module and logout module so let's copy these two modules and then paste it in pay bill as well as paste it in the interact e transfer okay let's move the login to the first step in all the scripts for transfer pay bill and interact we also need to have one more step that is selecting the account so let's add another include controller so add logic controller and then include controller move it to next to the login and then rename it to select account module okay and then you have to select the select account test fragment so open now copy this and paste it in remaining two scripts so select account okay so now save the script clear the results and read on the script you will be seeing the exact result as we see in the module controller so you can use module controller or you can use the include controller both will work same way the only difference is if you are using the module controller then you need to have those test fragments inside the same test plan whereas if you use include controller then you can have those test fragment as a separate files so that other team members can work on those modules okay so if you go through the results launch from login script so we have login also from login and then logout from login and then if you see the transfer we have launch login and then select account logout so this is the way we can organize our scripts properly to promote the reusability principle okay
So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understand the modularization concept explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or requires more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.